We must be hungry. And but he answered and said, It is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Our Lord always had a good answer. Amen. Amen. Then the devil taketh him up into the holy city and setteth him on a pinnacle of the temple and saith unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down. For it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hand they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou shalt dash their foot against stone. Now notice something. Satan was quoting scripture. Mm -hmm. wow. And that could have really shocked a lot of people and fooled them, but not Jesus. Jesus said unto him, It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Amen. And again the devil taking him up into exceeding high mountain, dwelleth, and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. And saith unto him, All these things will I give thee, if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Then saith Jesus unto him, Get thee behind, or get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt not worship, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Amen. Then the devil leaveth him, and behold, I like this, the angels came and minister unto it. How beautiful. Praise God. How beautiful. I have some other scripture that I'm not going to turn to. Kings, 1 Kings 17 and also 1 Kings 19. I will be using in this message today. Pastor, would you pray? Lord Jesus, we're so thankful today. We pray, God, that your Hallelujah. anointing will Hallelujah. rest on the man of God. Use him, Lord, as a vessel yes. right now to speak yes. your will, your yes. word yes. to your people today. Anoint him mightily, yes. God, with your spirit. Yes. We're hungry, Lord, to hear from you today. Yes. In Jesus' name we trust. Amen. Everybody said amen. 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 And you may be seated. Thank you for standing. In honor of God's word. I want to speak to you about the tragedy of the twilight hour. The tragedy of the twilight hour. And I'm so glad to see everyone that's here. Amen. And uh, all of you have come in to worship God today. And that means so very much. Jesus gave us a plan to follow. In the twilight hour, we can become deceived. I want you to listen to this. This is happening now to some people. Maybe not here, but somewhere else. In the twilight hour, danger, dangerous time. And uh, I will mention some of these situations that happen in the twilight hour. We do not see things as they really are in the twilight. We can be tricked and we can let up. The enemy can make it appear harmless as he did with Eve. But if we looked at it in the light of truth, we would see the difference from the real. We would see the fakeness of it all. When Satan shows you something, it's not the true picture. You can look at those billboards, they'll have those drinks on the billboard floating in a cool uh, stream, but they don't show the end result of the people that get hooked on those drinks and uh, don't ever get off of it. That's, they're not going to show that. They had a parade right here in Waco uh, several years ago. And they put a uh, float in the last part that had a, a beer float. And, and, uh, and, but they, 
people have put a different deal on me in those. They put a, or a car, two cars had gone and wrecked into each other from drunken drivers. And oh, they didn't want that in the parade. But uh, the judge ruled that it could be there because the others are there. Amen. So it stayed in the parade. But it gave a different sign to what those people that was pushers of beer, wine, and whiskey. They didn't want that sign shown. And that's why you don't see it on those billboards. That's not on the billboards. And But the thing about it is, in the twilight hour, sometimes you don't see the reality. Uh, I will be using some illustrations of that in my message today. But we need the power of the name of Jesus. That's right. We cannot handle Satan through any other medium or power. Right. Only through that beautiful power of Jesus. Yes. The yes. name of Jesus. Yes. Also, we have the Holy Ghost to lead us, Amen. to protect us, to love us. Amen. We have the Word of God to guide us. And Pastor, I'd like for you to stand up here by me for this next illustration. We have the ministry. Mm -hmm. This is it. Amen. To warn, advise, and to teach us. Amen. Right. We have a pastor. Amen. Amen. Folks, Amen. listen to your pastor. Thank you. Because yes. God's going to direct him. Going to lead him to preach certain messages, teach certain lessons that we need to hear. Thank you, pastor. Amen. We also have our conscience to talk to us. Thank God we do. If we get too familiar or too careless, I remember a situation had a young woman in the church in Austin and she called me one morning. That's when my wife was working for a doctor and she wanted me to come pray for her. And uh, so I said, well, I'll see what I can do. And so I dressed and got in the car and was fixing to leave. Thought about going by our house, but the Holy Ghost told me, no, don't go. And uh, later on she said, I thought you were coming by to pray for me. I said, well, I couldn't do it. Couldn't make it. And I didn't go ahead and say the Holy Ghost told me not to go, but I knew in my heart why I wasn't going. Wasn't too long after that, she uh, had a nice husband and had four wonderful children, but she got her mind all crossed up. And a young man that she kept the children for him came by the house and uh, she had been lusting after him. And so, when he came into the house, she asked him to come into the bedroom and then she turned and locked the door. But she wasn't dressed properly at all and tempted him. And first he backed off, but then she just kept uh, just wanting him to come to the bed with her. And finally he did, and that first time she became expectant again. And uh, the devil had tricked her, but he also tricked the young man. And uh, the devil works like that, folks. He may try to get you into a situation that you can't back out because you're too familiar with it or too careless. And that's a tragedy of the twilight hour. The enemy tries to get us into a place where we can't back out. We need to stay alert and aware in the twilight hour. Got to stay alert and aware. I was traveling from a board meeting one night and anxious to get home. And I was driving way too fast, 80 and 90 miles an hour. 
I was on a deserted uh, highway, what didn't have hardly any traffic on it, especially that time of the night. But I had a feeling that I should slow down. And so I did. And just a little ways on down the highway came upon a herd of black Angus cows, cattle. Now you can't see them in the night. They're black, solid black. And they were on the road and up and down the side of the road. What a way. To, if I'd have been traveling at 80 and 90 miles an hour, bro, I wouldn't be here today. But God told me to slow down, and I obeyed him. And I came up on them at a good speed. I could climb the brake and get on the horn and begin to move them where I could get on through. And I, I wanted to call the sheriff department, tell them about it, because somehow somebody else might not slow down. But you see, that's what happens in the twilight hour. You can't see it. You, you, you're just, you're led in the wrong thought and feeling, and especially if you're driving. And I thought about my friend, Brother Bill Davis, pastored in Waco, done a good job, and uh, he had a precious wife, and they were tra traveling in East Texas in the twilight time. That's before it's dark, and daylight is just fading away. He didn't see the cow. The cow was the color of twilight. And he hit the cow, traveling fast. And it hurt her more than it hurt him. And uh, they were on the side of the road, and he was holding her in his arms. They could hear the ambulance coming, but she didn't last. She died in his arms. Mm -hmm. Wonderful Pentecostal lady. Died in his arms. Later on, he married another good woman. And... Uh, then he passed away in Waco in the church. He come into the service on Sunday and died right there. His wife still living. But you see, what caused the accident was the twilight hour. He did not see the cow. I remember when I was in Cleveland, a deputy sheriff got a call. And he was rushing, probably driving about 80, lights on, siren, headed to Joshua, an emergency. And he did not see, is either a horse or a mule, it was gray. Same color of the twilight. He didn't see it, and he hit it, and it killed him. A deadly shot. You see, the twilight hour it has no favorites. It has no favorites. And it'll try to get you if it can. I think of the devil had an option of his tools. And he said one tool was not for sale. And they asked him, what tool is that? He said, the tool of discouragement. He said, I won't sell that one because I use it too much. If he can get you discouraged, he can talk to you with temptation and possibly pull you down. We don't want that to happen to us. So we have to stay aware and we have to stay alert. Oh, that's the only way we're going to make it, folks. And then I read where in the first chapter, uh, first Kings 9, 17th chapter and 19th chapter is about Elijah. Elijah was running from Jezebel and it was twilight time. He got under a juniper tree, it's, this is the word of God, and asked God to let him die. 
Lord, I want you to just let me die. And God let him go to sleep. Then an angel came, woke him up, and he saw a meal and a cruise of water right there. And the angel told him, go ahead and eat. And he did, and he drank. And then he went back to sleep. And the angel came and woke him again and said, eat, for you've got a long ways to go. And you need all the food and water you can have right now. And he went in the strength of that 40 days and 40 nights. And then he got to a, a cave and got in it. And I'll stop right there on that part. But later on, another situation. And this time, he was close to a brook. He was close to water in the brook, Cherub. And God told him to drink of the brook. And God hath commanded the ravens and I still like blackbirds for that. <laughs> I really do. I, 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 I tell them sometimes when they're around my car at Walmart or somewhere, I'll say, now you folks, y'all take care of yourself now. <laughs> I believe in blackbirds. Because <laughs> God used the blackbirds to feed the prophet. That's what the Bible says. Use the ravens to feed the prophet. And uh, no telling how much they fed him because they took care of him. Amen. But the brook finally dried up because there was a, a time that Elijah told Ahab the king that there's not going to be no rain. And there wasn't. And uh, so the brook dried up and God sent Elijah to Zarephath. God would use a widow woman to sustain him there. Take care of him. Take care of him. Praise God. The Lord does that for us so much, folks. Amen. If we didn't have Jesus, what in this whole wide world would we do? He stands by us. He's there when nobody else is there. He encourages us. I have a wonderful wife. December the 6th, we'll have 67 years together. That's a long time. I heard a good testimony of a marriage back here. And that was 30 something years, if I remember right. Well, her and I have had 67 years. And God has really been with us. <coughs> oh, excuse me. I know you want some of this, but I'm doing the work, so let me <laughs> My, that's good. Thank Brother Gidry's son for bringing me that. Amen. But the word of the Lord tells us that he will never leave us nor forsake us. Now that's a promise, folks. That is a promise. And my wife and I would like to go up in the rapture together. Yes. I think of my good friend, good friend, Brother Jake T. Pugh. My how I thought a lot of him, loved to hear him preach. And at times he was, was my counselor. And uh, I talked with him about a situation and he gave me some good advice. But there come a day that he passed away. He brought his wife to the church where his body was in state. And uh, that was on a Wednesday. I think he passed on a Tuesday. And uh, they brought her there on a Wednesday. She viewed her husband and then went home. Now listen to this. She went home and that night passed away. So on Friday, they had both of them skewed together on Friday. What a great victory. My, my. 
And my wife and I would like to have that, Brother Wolf, if you'll help us believe for that. Amen. We just want to go together. About 30 years from now. Uh huh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that put me up there, won't it? <laughs> but the Lord is so good that He He didn't say that He would take care of you for a little while. He didn't say that. I'll never leave thee nor forsake thee. We heard a wonderful lesson today on the blessings of God. Amen. God stood by his people and he will today he will this morning and uh, I told you I wouldn't hold you very long I uh, I would go into perilous times for a few minutes but I don't think I will because we're living in perilous times folks and it's a sign now hear me that the Lord is coming soon yes man and I believe with all of my heart that he is. Brother Ray, he's coming soon. He wants to get us all ready for he can take us out of here. And uh, the sooner he comes, the better off we'll be. That's true. Because I don't want to be in this world when the end Christ takes over. I want to be gone. And I want you to be gone. That's right. I want Brother Wolf and Sister Wolf to be gone. We don't want to be here when the Antichrist takes a full sway. And he's going to. I, I didn't get to hear the man teach, but I was at a revival meeting in Waco with my neighbors. And he said, I'll be teaching tomorrow night on prophecy and I want you to know I believe the Antichrist is living right now. Mm -hmm. Well, I do too. I don't know where he's at, but I believe he's living right now, just waiting for his day to come. And uh, I'd like to heard that man teach that lesson, but I wasn't able to go the next night. But anyway, Jesus is getting us ready, folks, for that great day. Amen. And we want to be ready when he comes. We don't want to wait till it's too late. Don't keep putting off living for Jesus. You can't afford to do that. You want to say, God, I want your will in my life now. And I want to listen to you. I want to obey you. And I want you to have your way with me. And that's what we need to do is hear the voice of the Spirit and listen to it. Obey it. The pastor preaches a message that we need. Let's listen. Let's obey it. Because it's going to take us through. Amen. Ministry was given for our perfection. And we've got to hear it. Got to listen to it. It's important. Very important. So don't wait till it's too late. God don't want you to wait until it's too late. Amen. Pastor. I'm going to turn it back to you and let these folks have that great dinner for all of us. Amen. That's pretty amazing right there. <laughs> Amen. Let's stand and we'll thank God for His Word today. Amen. Lord Jesus, You're so good to us. Thank you, Lord. You are so good to us, Lord. We lift you up. We thank you. Help us to feel the urgency of the hour we're living in. Help us to put you first in everything that we do, Lord. Give us a sense of urgency and a zeal, Lord, for your work and for your will in our lives every day. Oh, we praise you, Jesus. We worship you, Lord. We lift up your name, God. We thank you for all that you're doing. God, I pray for each and every precious soul that's here, Lord. Place your hand upon them. Help us all to draw closer to you every day, Jesus. We need your direction and your guidance, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for your word. Thank you for the power of your spirit, Lord. Thank you for all the great things you're doing. Lord, those that are sick here today, Lord, give them a touch. 
in their body right now, Lord. In the name of Jesus, honor their faith. Those that need a miracle in their life, God, we agree together right now in the name of Jesus that you'll reach out and bless them, Lord, with your power, with your spirit, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You're so good to us, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Amen. Let's just be still for just one moment here. Talk to the Lord. Yes. Open up your heart. Be sensitive. Let God speak to you right now. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We thank you for your spirit, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Bless each person that's here today, Lord. Keep your hand upon us, God. Draw us closer to you. Thank you, Jesus. beside the still waters right now and if you need anything from the Lord right now just open your heart talk to him in your own way and say Lord I need you I need you yes. Yes. hallelujah thank you Jesus thank you Jesus Amen. Let's pray. We'll ask the Lord to bless our time of fellowship and the food that everyone's worked so hard. Lord Jesus, we just thank you for the word that we've heard today. Lord, we ask you to bless our time of fellowship together. The food, Lord, bless it to our bodies. Bless each person that's here, Lord. Draw us closer to you. Bless the Moors. We're so thankful, God, for their ministry, for the word they brought us here today and so we thank you, Jesus, for your goodness, for your love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's head next door and eat. Be sure and thank Brother Moore and Sister Moore for being here today.